Okay, lesson four, small sand tower, basic solo form. Taking it from here, double pung, where we left off. <coughs> it's a tricky little movement, this one. Looks just as I did it before. And then into chi. This is a variation and representation of rollback in the form and into chi as, as what you've done in your slow form. When you're learning through these form, through these movements, try to uh, get through your form, your slow form, before doing the small sansa. So if you haven't done rollback yet in the form, try to do that in the form first to get the basic structure and mechanic of it. Um, the form takes you through to single whip in the small sansa. Um, so yeah, learn through your slow form so that you're a little bit ahead of the slow form and, and you're learning the small sand sow second rather than the other way around. Okay, again all the footwork is the same as what we've been doing before. So you've got your right leg forward, you're just going to do your normal swivel back, just like before when we were doing these, these blocks. Pushing off the right leg, swiveling so that the feet are parallel. This time we're going to swivel back to the left and then take a right footed step forward. As you do that, now we're going to do this basic form, nice large frame. What we're going to do is, the left hand is doing most of the work as we come back. So we lift it up and let the hand go yin, like this. It comes up. Now as I push off my right leg and swivel on the left heel, see that? Do like a slice. Like as if you're cutting with the knife edge and chopping someone's head off. Just slicing down, but in fact you're, you're blocking a punch coming from here like that. You're striking down with the back of the uh, palm. So from here, raise up. See how I'm just starting to sit back as I raise the palm and now I kick off this right leg and twist my waist and strike down. That's where the application happens. The posture though continues so that the arms cross. Although the actual strike would be here, not here. You'll understand that better when I show the application with the partner. Okay. So that's how it works. So it's a continuous movement. The application, that's where you would hit his arm, but it just slices past his arm and folds up into your own arm. So that, that way you can, ten, can, can continue into the next movement. So it looks like that. Totally centered on that left leg. The right hand is slightly yin, the left hand is slightly yang. See how the angle of my body, the right elbow is uppermost. So I'm not, for instance, this way. I'm slightly just tilted, so the left fingers are facing up, the right fingers are facing down. See, just raise it up as I sit back. Drop the right hand, so it just drops down yin. So it's just an extra guard, but this hand's going to do the work. Bang. Now as it's traveling up the arm, as it's sliding up the arm, watch what happens. See the arms just tuck in. Basically just bend your elbows so that the palms come close to your belly. As you're doing that, you're going to swivel to the left. So we've done a full 90 degree swivel as you pull the hands in. But don't change the state of the hands. The left hand is yang, the right hand is yin. You keep them in that state, you just bend the elbows as you take it across. Notice how I've kept my shoulders down. I haven't gone like this and pulled it in and tucked everything up. The shoulders remain relaxed, just the elbows bend in a little bit. So one, bend in, swivel. Now, as I push them out, I do a strike to that left hand corner. And when I do that strike, that's when the hands will change state. So the left hand is yang, the right hand is yin. You tuck them in, you keep that state. This is still yin, this is still yang, as I swivel across. Only when I push them out again, the right hand will change to slightly yang, the left hand will change to slightly yin. And as I say, only slightly. Don't go like fully yin and yang. It's, they're, they're kind of in a neutral state, really, but the right hand is fractionally more yang, the left hand is fractionally more yin. 
Notice the angle of the body. As I said here, see how the right elbow is higher than the left and the left fingers are pointing up. When I go to the other side, I don't want to leave it. See, now it's the same angle. What I want to do is change the angle so that I drop the right elbow and lift the left elbow. So from this side, I've done that move. One, tuck it in and push it out. See when I push it out, the angle has changed. So I've dropped my right elbow downward. I don't want this angle on my left side. I want this angle. So that's that movement. Lift, push back, swivel, tuck in, swivel across and pump out. And that's a strike there as well. So make sure you're getting power in both of those movements. So there. Okay, now you bang, your normal step, just like all the other steps we've been doing. And you're going to do chi, just like you've done in your slow form. Come down, connect the palms, and push forward to chi. Same posturing as in the slow form. So I'm not going to go over too much detail there, because you should have learnt this in the slow form. Always learn Yang Lu Chan's form to get all your basic foundations of movement. Okay, so from here, you're going to do it as a martial application though. So we're going to drop forward and get that kind of thing. So the structure is exactly the same. You're just doing it explosively this time. So the footwork's the same as the other postures. Uh, what your hands have got to do is, they've got to basically travel up, connect, just like you learned in the slow form with the mounts of the left palm on the radial bone. But you're not going to do it like this. You're not going to sort of connect them right down here at the base like we did in the slow form. Because the arms are crossed, if, if I do it without the step here, just sort of doing it slowly, see they're going to come together on their way forward and then they'll, that left palm will strike into the back of the right wrist as your foot hits the ground. So we get from there, that kind of thing happening. And of course, twisting to the front. There's a lot happening in that posture, uh, the way to get the power in that movement with what the backbone is doing, what the body is doing, what the legs are doing. I can't go into all of that detail in the basic form. The only principle that you will try to get is obviously that's part of your power, is just twisting your hips to the front. The dropping into your front leg is going to give you power. But just a very basic principle of the squeezing motion is that. Just fractionally, your elbows will come from a slightly open position to a slightly squeezed position. Like that. So they start like that, and as, as you make contact, watch. Like, like as if you're going like this, but never do it that extent. It's just, ah, and then relax off it again. Be sure to keep your left fingers, of course, up out of the way, that you don't want to get them crushed in there, because you're striking with the back of the right wrist like that, but with the power of both hands. Okay, we carry on from there. Series of little upper back fist punches. Footwork's all the same still. So you swivel back and just open your palms, keeping the eyes on the front always. Head turns with the body. Notice what the palms do. They just stay as they are. The right hand stays yin, the left hand stays yang. See that? That's all your hands are going to do. From there, so the right wrist is in the center, like doing a hooking motion with the, this little V shape here. The left hand is chopping with the knife edge across. So from here, we get one. Left wrist, uh, right wrist in the center. Both your fingers are pointing to the same point, like that. The right hand is yin, the left hand is yang. Now, what your hand's gonna do is this. And relax. So you're going to do like a back fist, like we learnt in the first posture when we went like that and flicked it. Remember when we did the pung posture? Only this time, you're going to flick it this way. So the flick, instead of being this way, or the second one which was downward, this time you're going to make your fist flat, so effectively the flick will now go upward. So you're going to punch him underneath the chin. You're going to actually aim up under here like that and flick under there. So you aim like you're going to the throat and flick it up at the last minute and punch up into uh, Governor v uh, CV23 under there.
bang, and then loosen. So you've swung back there. Now you're going to do that as you do your step. Same stepping as before. Just throw it out and flick, and then relax. So with the step, <laughs> see? So you barely see what the hand does because it's, it's just a flick. It's not a big movement like this. Make sure you're not trying to create that upward angle by going like this, using your shoulder. The shoulder, the arm, just like a straight punch, straight forward. It's only the wrist on the end that gives you that little snap, just there. So, make sure your hips are in the front when you finish, 70% forward. The right hand, it's not doing anything in particular, it's just sort of staying guarding his arm. So don't make sure you do not do this, especially when you're doing it with a partner. Don't do something like that, indicating that you would be holding his arm and grabbing it. Just allow your right hand, I'll do it at an angle like this so you can see what the right hand does. That's on his wrist, this is on his elbow for the strike. He's throwing a punch in, you're just taking it across to the side and then coming through with your punch. So, what we want to do here is, see how the right hand effectively has actually travelled slightly forward. Even though in the form we're just concentrating on this one left-handed technique, however, the body mechanic that we learn, every body mechanic that we learn in any of the strikes that we're doing, they teach you a way of moving so that it would naturally follow into another posture. If I went like that and thinking like I'm holding something out here, I don't feel like I can go anywhere from there. I'd, I'd have to think of something else and, and come back with something completely different. What I want is, now that's not in the form, but I could have done that in in terms of what it's teaching you in self-defense. So as soon as that first one's, it just naturally rolls into the next posture. So don't grab, just basically just let it travel slightly forward with the natural progression of your body. Okay, you just do that posture twice more. So we're back here, bang, there's, there's your, your snap, upward snapping fist. The right wrist is still yin. So you're just gonna open your left fist or it should be already open, remember? It should have just snapped open. But you just sit back and do the hooking motion with the left hand and the chopping motion with the right hand. Exactly the same. Swivel back like that. So fingers like that again. Left wrist in the center this time. Exactly the same move. In with your right fist. Like that. Exactly the same posture. One more time. Twist back. Chop this hand over. So the palm that's just punched, all it has to do is go yin doesn't have to turn at all. The one that's coming from the rear, that has to twist over to palm up, so both knife edges are facing away from you for each one. So we've come from there, and one, and now again, just like the first one. So that's those three moves. So that whole section, from double pung, that's the end of that set of movements, okay? That's the end of lesson four. Thank you very much.